Looking at the national perspective of the Tigers this offseason, I got to say Missouri football still has something to prove, especially to the state of Oklahoma. Let's talk about all of this noise and more right now on Locked on Mizzou. You are Locked on Mizzou, your daily podcast on the Missouri Tigers, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, all you true sons and daughters, I'm John Miller, your Mizzou mafioso and a weekend warrior here. Yes, a special Saturday edition here of Locked on Mizzou since I've missed the last couple of Fridays. Well, this is what we call a make good in the broadcasting business. But you know what? Coming up on the show, I want to talk about one of my colleagues threw out a tampering accusation against Eli Drinkwitz, plus why maybe Missouri has a better chance at quarterback Matt Zollers than I would have originally thought. But you know what? First, I also want to tell you that this episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers join today and you'll get $150 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit at fanduel.com slash locked on to get started. And you know what? Let's actually get started really quickly here. I haven't mentioned uh, some important dates here in particular. The Missouri annual spring game is set to take place on March 16th. Hopefully that baby will actually take place outdoors so we Missouri fans can can take it in. The game was moved indoors to that glittering new practice facility last season. But Missouri likes to do these spring games early for various reasons. I think the main one is, hey, if you get an injury in the spring game, that gives you a few more weeks to potentially heal before fall camp. So I do think there's some merit to that for sure. And until, frankly, Missouri fans make the black and gold game, the spring football game, more of a priority, more of an event. Well, I don't know that it means that much when it actually is in the calendar. So there you go. March 16th, the black and gold game. There you go. But I got to say, you know, reading, I've been reading a lot of off season coverage here, of course, and from the, from outsiders perspectives as well, of course, lots of other sec teams have their perceptions of Missouri. And unsurprisingly, I guess, you know, there's still a lot of fans out there who are not Missouri fans. They're skeptical of Eli Drinkwitz this whole era. And when you think about it from their perspective, that makes some sense before this season, Missouri hasn't been very good lately. Let's be real. And under Drinkwitz, they were basically a 500 ball club for all intents and purposes, before this breakout 2023 season. And I see a lot of a lot of fans, a lot of Oklahoma fans in particular, I've noticed, especially yesterday. Well, their fans seem to think that we had a soft schedule last year. I, w- I would challenge that a little bit. And they say, well, they could have lost to Memphis. I don't know about that, but they also discount the Kansas State win Because of the Harrison Mevis long field goal, they say Tennessee was really your only impressive victory. And, oh, Ohio State in the Cotton Bowl. Well, that team was a shell of itself. Blah, 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 blah. Well, I'll tell you this. Yes, the Ohio State offense was a bit of a shell of itself by the end of that game, in part because Missouri's defense took out their quarterback, number one. But that Ohio State defense, number number two, that's as, that's as close to the 2024 Ohio State and 2023 Ohio State defense as you're going to get. And that's a really, really good unit, especially against the pass. But you know what? Regardless of anybody's bias, whether it's my bias as a Mizzou fan or people who hate Mizzou, any way you slice it by the numbers, Missouri was a top 10 team, either by the projections, the polls, just the simple 11 and 2 results on the field kind of speak for themselves and guess what next season as i pointed out on my previous episode missouri is projected to be pretty darn close to that if not inside of that top 10 number and again that's what the numbers say that's the objective truth at this moment maybe maybe those numbers will end up being wrong of course projections 
do not predict the future. They're, they're fairly accurate, of course, but obviously Missouri well outperformed its expectations last season. Heck, they could do it again this year or, of course, fall back. You never know. And all I'm saying is I wouldn't be so arrogantly sure of a Missouri collapse if I were an Oklahoma fan. And I got to say, speaking of Oklahoma fans, over at the Locked On Sooners podcast, well, I believe John Williams, the host of that show, he threw out the idea, well, retweeted, quote tweeted an Oklahoma State fan who was accusing Eli Drinkwitz of tampering with their star running back, Ollie Gordon. Now, I got to say, I, I did some pretty good Googling and searching around for any type of information or accusation from a credible source that was not an anonymous Twitter user, an Oklahoma State fan, and, well, I couldn't find any. Closest I could find was some some Oklahoma State person who's affiliated with ESPN, again, sort of making reference to alleged tampering allegations. I don't know. Number one, I think it's a little bit of little bit of naivete at the very least on the part of any big time college football fan to think that programs and coaches are not talking to players all the time. If you want to call that tampering, okay, then I guess tampering, if it's not legal, well, it's something that's happening all the time. Sort of like certain places, hey, the interstate, it says the, the in Kansas City, there's spots where the interstate says the speed limit's 55. Well, in reality, everybody's going 70. So what's really the speed limit? That's kind of the situation here with so-called tampering. And by the way, the old glass houses analogy, when it comes to the Oklahoma Sooners football program in particular, very much applies here. But seriously, that's a pretty heavy, it's still a fairly heavy allegation to throw out there, in my opinion, without any real evidence to it. So at the very least, I had to at least clap back at the Locked On Sooners podcast a little bit and point out that, ah, yes, the pure is the wind-driven snow Oklahoma Sooners football program. That's what we all think of, right, when we think of Norman, Oklahoma. But regardless, I just think it's very fascinating here that Missouri obviously still has something to prove. That was their motto this past season. Well, it seems to me, again, they're going to have to prove it to the nation, to the larger SEC, especially the old guard of the Southeastern Conference. It sure seems to me like they're going to have to prove it all over again. And you know what? I'm good with it. That's fine. I'm sure this team wouldn't have it any other way. I think Brady Cook and Luther Burden in that whole locker room is going to embrace the challenge. And, and quite honestly, it's kind of nice to have some real hate back. It really is. Some hate that goes back for decades. It's good to be annoyed with Oklahoma Sooners fans and to have them annoyed with Missouri fans once again, especially when, hey, the return to the SEC here, it should be a heck of a game in Columbia. Maybe a toss-up game right now. In fact, on paper, Missouri's got to be favored by a field goal or so, I would think, at the moment. And by the way, if you've been listening to the show recently, well, I thought I had a pretty good rant at Texas's expense the other day, too. They definitely, their athletic director got my goat recently, too. Now sooner people are firing me up. Ah, good times. It's just like the old Big 12 once again. And speaking of something to prove for 2024, well, Missouri raced past its over-under for the season at FanDuel. Six and a half was the preseason number. Of course, Missouri ends up with 10 wins in the regular season. Well, nine and a half now the number over at FanDuel Sportsbook for Missouri. But a lot of the action, at least the heavy numbers, Minus 167 on the under. What does that mean? Well, you have to pay a lot more. You have to pay $17 to win 10 as opposed to, hey, if you bet the over 9.5 right now and that hits, well, you get $14 on your $10 bet. So basically, Vegas wants you. My friends at FanDuel Sportsbook, more specifically, would very much like you to bet on the over. So they're doubting Missouri as well. They're saying we still have something to prove. But you know what? Here's what you don't have to prove, that FanDuel is America's number one sports book. And with 
With football over, it's time to get buckets. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning a $5 bet. That's $150 bucks if your bet wins. Bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same-game parlays, exclusive props, and more. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. It's FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. Thanks for making Locked On Mizzou your first listen every day. And thanks for telling a friend that we are free and available wherever you get podcasts, including the Sirius XM app, where, of course, you can hear the Missouri Tigers take on the Ole Miss Rebels tonight on the app or on your radio dial channel 383 on Sirius XM. But you know what? I'll have more to talk about. i got quite a few updates on Missouri basketball coming up here in just a little bit. But I do want to clean up something from a previous episode with myself and Brian Smith. We talked a good bit about Pennsylvania quarterback Matt Zollers, who released his top four. Missouri was among them, but so was Penn State. Pittsburgh, a couple hometown schools there, also along with the Georgia Bulldogs, too. So a lot of competition there for Missouri, and obviously getting in that top four is a plus. You love to see that. At the same time, I was kind of hinting it with Brian Smith, our, our recruiting expert here at Locked On. I was saying, you know, I love that we're in the top four, but I just don't really see Missouri prying this kid away from Penn State when he's made multiple visits to there already but you know what according to powermazoo.com their latest chamber post on friday listen obviously not going to give away all their information here but just suffice it to say missouri has a lot better chance at matt zollers it would appear than i would have assumed i just thought he was penn state's probably kid and less proven otherwise but hey it looks like at least according to Gabe DeArmond and his sources he's saying Missouri's really got a shot at Matt Zoller so that's one to watch and maybe his recruitment his his commitment I should say could could come sooner rather than later as well and we do have some basketball news updates on the injury front and well, unfortunately, for the most part, like a lot of things in the news flow of Missouri basketball this year, not a lot of great news, it would seem. Eli Hoff over at STL Today was the first. I saw a report that Caleb Grill has had some setbacks with his recovery from his wrist injury. Mizzou's medical staff has not cleared him and will not clear him for a game until he is at at a very minimum, gets through a full practice. And that has not happened yet. And actually, because he's had some setbacks, there is no time frame for his return. I think at this point, we can pretty much assume that Caleb Grill is is probably done before the season. Co- Coach Gates says we just have to proceed with caution and not put him in a bad situation. He's going to continue to try his best, but he hasn't completed a full practice that. what well, That's where you have to gauge if he can't complete a full practice, he's not going to get cleared by the doctor. So it, it really is as simple as that. It's you know it's not a thing of a pain management or anything like that. He actually broke a bone in his wrist, right? That thing just has to it, it has to heal one way or the other. And also kind of the same deal with Trent Pierce. It would seem a very different ailment for him and in fact not an injury an illness it would seem an illness that has spread to at least one of his ears and he may have he might have to have some type of procedure on that ear here in the next little bit or so apparently this is causing Pierce a lot of trouble apparently even just traveling with the team in an airplane that kind of deal so if you've ever had you know a bad earache something like that or just you know swimmer's ear that type of thing that can be really debilitating so hopefully Pierce gets that under control what a what an odd sort of situation unusual situation an unfortunate situation for a very talented young man that just never seemed to get off on the right track this season but I gotta say I, I still am really curious to see where Trent Pierce goes in year two at Missouri. Of course, assuming he's back next season, I, for one, 
Really hope he's back next year and we get more of a, a full normal season for Trent Pierce next year. Kind of like I hoped for Isaiah Mosley for the Tigers. And well, obviously Mosley, I think, would have helped Mizzou quite a bit this season. Now, on the more positive side for Missouri, Jesus Carolero Martin is going to be available for the basketball game tonight against Ole Miss. Again, 7.30 is the tip-off here on Saturday night. Also, Sean East is apparently progressing, but he's uncertain as well, according to Dennis Gates. This was from a couple days ago. We said, we won't know until we get three more situations. Today's practice tomorrow's practice, that being Thursday and Friday, and then shoot around on game day to manage that and see how his body responds. If his body doesn't respond well and they're swelling after the increased workload, then we know what it is and what we need to do and not do. So in other words, if if East, who knows what's happened the last couple of days in practice here, frankly, I haven't seen any updates one way or the other but sounds like shoot around here will be able to see if how his knee responds and obviously any swelling there east will be sitting it out and the thing is you know it is a little bit interesting to see how bad Missouri has gotten since Caleb Martin was injured Caleb Martin Caleb Grill excuse me so I understand that a lot of people are saying, hey, he's just a role player. It shouldn't be that big of a deal. And you're 100% right. To put it all on the feet of Caleb Grill would be insane. But it's also not that weird that we were significantly worse without Grill because, frankly, look at the difference between Missouri, especially defensively with and without Trey Gomillion last year, and even on the offensive end of the court, just having another guard out there, another guard who could handle the ball, make an open shot, knew what he was doing, a veteran player who knew where to stand and where to pass the ball and all that good stuff. I think that really hurt Missouri toward the end of the season and may have been as big of a reason as any why they got upset in the second round of the tournament after beating Utah State. And I will say the last lone bright spot of Missouri's most recent home basketball game was seeing Mike Anderson back for the annual reunion at halftime of former Missouri players. Well, Mike Anderson was a part of that, the 15-year anniversary of that grade 2009 Missouri squad that made the Elite Eight. You know, I just thought it was cool not only to see Mike back, but getting a, a round of applause. I didn't hear a single boo whatsoever. Obviously, I think he probably had the boos coming in, in previous years to that. That's going to happen when you leave Missouri for Arkansas, especially a team that's was always been a rival in basketball, but has become even more so, obviously, I would say, since entering the Southeastern Conference. But you know what? As much as I think there were hurt feelings when Mike Anderson, I'll put, I'll throw myself into that into that camp for sure. There was definitely some hurt feelings when Mike Anderson left Missouri. But at the same time, hey, that was his dream job. Sure, he could have handled it better. But at the same time. You know, Mike Anderson's era at Missouri was a good one, for sure. The end of the Quinn Snyder era was really, really bad, and the program needed to be turned around, and turned around, Mike Anderson did, for sure. And again, that 2009 run, really memorable. Heck, that the 2010, 2011 teams were pretty darn good as well. And also, you know, that set the stage with his own recruiting for a very memorable 2012 season, maybe the greatest basketball recruiting class in history. Well, you got to give credit to Mike Anderson for that. So you know what? Time heals all wounds. And that was nice to see, in my opinion. And what happens when Michael Sam, Craig Kuligowski, and Dave Christensen walk into a bar in Poland? Yes, I know that sounds like I'm going to pay something off with a tasteless joke, but I'm being serious. What would happen? Because we might just find out this coming football season. I'm going to tell you exactly what I'm talking about here in just a little bit. But first, I want to tell you about game time, the fastest and easiest way to buy tickets for all of the sports, music, comedy, 
and theater events near you. And right now, all users get $20 off their first purchase when they use the code locked on. And you know what? With that 20 bucks, hey, if you're taking four people to the Missouri Tennessee game, you can basically get in for free at six bucks a ticket. That's the get in price. But you know what? The beauty of game time is, in my opinion, go to the list view because then you can just quickly scroll down, see your views and go, oh, hey, there's the 100 level right there, 108, hey, 12 bucks a ticket, not too shabby. How easy is that? If you put stuff off to the last minute, like I do on occasion, game time will take all the guesswork out of buying those last minute tickets. And again, right now, all game time users get $20 off with their first purchase. Just download the Game Time app. Use code L O C K E D O N for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. So, an interesting note from Dave Matters' Morning Matters newsletter comes out. On every Friday, would definitely recommend Dave's work, who's now, well, he's a member of the other team. He's working for Mizzou these days. And in a good note here on Morning Matters, he said, there's a Mizzou reunion taking place in Poland? Former Tigers offensive coordinator Dave Christensen is beginning his second year as the head coach of the Panthers Roklaw, I think that's how you pronounce that, of the 24-team European League of Football after making the playoffs in his debut season. His new defensive coordinator is former longtime Mizzou defensive line coach Craig Kuligowski, who has tapped one of his most decorated former Tigers to coach the defensive line. 2013 All-American Michael Sam, the 2013 SEC Defensive Player of the Year. So how about that? Dave Christensen, Craig Kuligowski, and Michael Sam with a little reunion in Poland. How great is that? I got to say that put a smile on my face to hear all of those names from the past. Frankly, you know, a couple guys, it reminds me, you know, Dave Christensen did a really good job at Missouri for the most part, I would say. You know, you look back, it seems like every fan likes to likes to blame the offensive coordinators and the defensive coordinators for just about anything that goes wrong, and they don't get nearly enough credit, in my humble opinion. I would say that of Dave Yost as well. I would say it of Josh Henson, too, who was the offensive coordinator of that great 2013 Missouri offense. So just a little food for thought there and some and some interesting notes there. And, and by the way, just one thing off topic here. Since it is All-Star Saturday night, indulge me here a little bit in a non-Mizzou topic. Because I got to be honest, I have no I had idea how to relate this back to the Tigers. I don't think a Mizzou player has ever even been in the NBA slam dunk contest. But I'll say this, as somebody who's been a basketball fan forever, here, here's my loose attempt. What's good for the NBA is good for college basketball is just good for the sport in general. And I just want what's good for the sport of basketball. And I think one thing, obviously, in the 1980s that helped the NBA and basketball along in general in popularity was the slam dunk contest, for sure. You could go all the way back to Dr. J and, of course, Julius Irving in the ABA slam dunk contest. But really, it was Michael Jordan against Dominique Wilkins. Back in the 80s when you had two stars, two huge stars, the biggest stars, a couple of the biggest stars in the entire NBA, arguably the biggest star in the sport, in Michael Jordan at the time, along with Magic Johnson and Larry Bird, too, of course. But those guys weren't dunkers. So in terms of, hey, who do I want to see dunk a basketball those were number one and number two with a bullet, without question. But unfortunately, over the years, as time has gone along, fewer and fewer superstars, name players, have been wanting to be in this contest to the point where this season, as a huge NBA fan and a, and a fan of the dunk contest, going back for years, I was going, wait a minute, who's even in the dunk contest this year? Well, I was surpri pleasantly surprised to see 
Boston's Jalen Brown is in the dunk contest. Hey, he's a big name player, no doubt about that. But other than that, it's just, you know, a bunch of no name guys, to be quite honest with you. And obviously, LeBron James is kind of, for, for years, was sort of the elephant in the room. He's the, he's the Michael Jordan equivalent. He's the guy we all wanted to see be in the contest. And for years, he would say, oh, maybe this is the year. He would sort of tease like he was going to do it. Well, in my opinion, there's always been people who have thrown out ideas of, hey, here's how we fix the dunk contest. Maybe we need to offer more money for first place. Maybe we need to change the format. This, that, and the other. To me, here's how I would fix it. Just don't do it every year because here's the thing, the way dunking goes, it gets really difficult to come up with something creative that hasn't been done before that you can actually convert at a fairly high rate in front of a live audience because that's part of the deal. Sure, you can look on Instagram and you can look on YouTube and see these incredible dunks, but what you don't see is maybe the hundred takes that they missed. All you see is the one make. Well, that's not what you get a live NBA dunk contest. So to me, with that on top of everything else, make this like the World Cup. Make it like the Olympics. Let's just have the dunk contest every four years because then it'll really be an event. If you just have it every four years, oh, all of a sudden, it's not just this, oh, we're doing the dunk contest again. Okay. Now it's something you've actually built up anticipation for. And now it's something that people like LeBron James, there's a little more pressure on them to do it because they can't just say, ah, maybe next year, because then it's, ah, maybe four years from now. And in four years, lots can change. Obviously, lots can change in one year or one day or one moment, too. But my point is, I I do think there's something to this, not only in terms of putting more pressure on the bigger name players, making it a bigger event, making it maybe a more desirable big event for them to participate in, but also just in terms of giving players enough time to evolve and think of new creative dunks that, again, you can actually do and pull off in a live setting. So to me, Thanks again for indulging this absolutely non-related Missouri thought. But hey, on All-Star Saturday, eh, I just thought I'd throw that in there right at the end of the show. But you know what? If you've listened to this point, you truly are a true son or daughter. Thank you very much for that. Thanks for listening as always. And you know what? Until next time, I am John Miller, and this has been Locked on Mizzou.